Revelation. And uh, another thank you to Doogie for joining us every Thursday here. So this is, let's see here. Dave Klug is the one that initially, I think he was watching like NFL Live or something. Dave Klug from Fantasy Pros. And he was watching NFL Live when the Panthers beat reporter for ESPN.com, uh, D. Newton ESPN. Is it David Newton? D. Newton ESPN is, is his handle. Mm-hmm. And he essentially uh, quoted what the Panthers beat reporter from ESPN.com said on national television this week. And then I have a question for you guys. He said the Panthers are preparing to make a strong push for Deshaun Watson and quote, will do whatever it takes to get Deshaun Watson. And that includes giving up three first round picks wow. and Christian McCaffrey. Now, I think to this point, Houston has been steadfast in saying we're not trading Deshaun Watson. Sure. And and the more it's actually it's kind of brilliant without them being brilliant. It's if they keep digging their heels in, then you get these teams that are like, all right, well, listen, we're we're like sitting here with Christian McCaffrey and three first round picks. We'll give you all of those things. Just give us Deshaun Watson. So you're I think you're gonna see more of this play out publicly here. What are your thoughts on this? Let's put a Vikings spin on this. Mm-hmm. Would you be willing? And I get the I get that Deshaun Watson is going to have to okay. Like if he doesn't want to play in Carolina or if he doesn't want to play in Minnesota, then he can just nix any trade. He has a full no trade clause. But if Deshaun Watson said yes, would you trade three first round picks and Dalvin Cook to get Deshaun Watson? Ooh. Now, now I did see a report after that that said that McCaffrey was not involved, but the three first round picks were. But yeah, if I was to take it with the Dalvin Cook question, my response to you is wait i'm gonna think about it yes absolutely <laughs> absolutely and, and i will tell you where i think houston has uh it's probably not a huge one but i think houston has a a hammer here a little bit is if the texans work out the best trade available to them and let's say it's a team that deshaun likes but does not not love and let's say he loves the dolphins okay i think the texans can say deshaun we will trade you to the Panthers. And if he's like, but Carolina, Deshaun, your choices are this. You can sit here while we essentially squat on your rights in perpetuity for a quite a while, right? Or you can be traded to the Panthers. So I do think that, that despite the fact that there's a no trade in play here, I think a trade is possible if the Texans just flat out get the best offer from a team like the Carolina Panthers. But if I'm the Vikings... And it's three first round picks and Cook. Yes, I make wow. that. I get again. I get a top five quarterback. I get a top yeah. five quarterback. No, what? but you but you'd be losing a huge offensive weapon, and yep. you'd be losing three shots at making the team better around the top five quarterback. That's true. I, listen, I'm just saying it's not an instant yes for me. It's not an instant yes for me either. But if if it was two first round picks and and Dalvin Cook, I would say where's the window? Yeah. But if I have Justin Jefferson, Thielen, and I can get a third receiver, right? And I get Deshaun Watson, and I can offload to another team the Kirk Cousins contract. I'm better. I'm better. And Dalvin Cook's really good, but guess what I can find more of? Really good Dalvin Cooks. I can find those guys. Now, he is special. I like him a lot. This is no dig, but I will always come back to this. Remove the name and your attachment to the player and only consider him as a position running back. Yeah. And, and, and we we're going to do next week on purple daily cheap plug here. We're going to do a full deep dive into sort of the state of Dalvin cook and his touches and his contract and just how, and how great he is, but also like the landscape of the Vikings. But I want to float this one thing. We've had a couple Twitter followers. I don't know what the exact source of this is, but it, we've had a couple Twitter followers send us the same screenshot of information, Super Bowl winner. So teams that have won the Super Bowl, and the player on that winning team that led the team in rushing in the Super Bowl itself. Correct. All right? Yep. And what their base salary is. So Dalvin Cook signed a contract where I think he's making like $12 million a year, something like that. Right. He's one of the five highest paid running backs in the NFL. Here's the list of Super Bowl winning teams, the player that led the team in rushing in the biggest game of the season, and what that player makes. Leonard Fournette, $2 million. Damian Williams, $1 million. Sony Michelle, four hundred eighty thousand dollars. Legarrette Blunt, nine hundred thousand dollars. 
And then LeGarrette Blunt again, $760,000. CJ Anderson, $585,000. LeGarrette Blunt again, $730,000. Percy Harvin led the Seahawks in rushing in 2013. There must have been a reverse or something. Yeah. He returned a kick for a touchdown and he made, I don't know, I can't read this. He's not a running back, but he made two and a half million dollars. Uh, Ray Rice, two million dollars. Yep. Ahmad Bradshaw, one point five million dollars. Yep. James Starks, three hundred twenty thousand dollars, and Pierre Thomas, four hundred sixty thousand dollars. So of these, it looks like twelve players on this list. Only five made over a million dollars a year. None of them made more than two and a half million dollars a year. Think about that. Absolutely. That's that's pretty amazing. Now, what do they do with the money that they would have spent on a highly paid running back, a left guard, a defensive player, pass rusher, you know, something else that helps you get to where you want to be, which is winning a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Uh, what you don't see on this list are guys who make ridiculous amounts of money. You don't see us uh, an, an Ezekiel Elliott type, right? You don't see Le'Veon Bell. Le- Le'Veon Bell from a few years ago exactly on this list. Who I, I was going to bring up. So, so. You would not do three first round picks. Oh my! If God. you were the Vikings, I want them to solve the like. I, I get the people, but but Kirk Cousins. Why would you? Why wouldn't you just roll with Kirk and keep your first round picks? And I get that, but Kirk's cap number in two years is forty five million. And Watson's is huge, but I consider him a top five quarterback. Mm-hmm. That's the difference. I agree. I would. Oh my God! I would. Here's what I would want. I would do it. Okay. I would do it. Okay. But what I would want is I'd want a couple pick swaps like. I'd want them to send Deshaun Watson and at least give me like a couple of third rounder. Like I want some replenishment of draft capital. Like give me a couple third well, rounders back. And then I would also look to, cause now you'd have to trade Kirk. Uh, that's what I was going to do. I would then look to trade Kirk for a first or second rounder. So I'm at least getting like, right. I'm trading three first and Dalvin, but I'm getting back a first Deshaun rounder. a first and like two thirds or something. Mm-hmm. So it's not quite as big of a ball. And keep in mind that Deshaun Watson's cap hit in 2022 and 2023 is 40 and 42 million respectively. So that, I mean, that's an insane, insane chunk of change. Yes, he's a better quarterback and on a different level than Kirk. He's in tier one of quarterbacks, I believe. I think we all can agree on that. But that is an insane amount of draft or uh, salary cap hit. And without first round picks, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, well, it's the, a risk. It is. It it's is a risk. a risk. Now, of course, Kirk's number is higher than that in 2022. <laughs> and the mo- you and have the to most, smooth that out. And the most important thing is my, my strategy and philosophy of football has changed because I have a different head coach. So like, I'm not trying to do this with Mike Mm -hmm. that we're, we're not doing that. So I'm not going to have a a guy saying, but I like defense. We don't want Deshaun. No, no, no. You're fired. I'm going to bring in a guy that knows how to use my really skilled and talented QB the right way. You know what you should have done? I mean, the the Texans went out and grabbed this 65 year old position coach guy to be their head coach. What you should have done is you should have offered him Mike instead of three first round picks, you give it two first round picks and And Mike Mike Zimmer. Zimmer. You can get a coach. Be great. Maybe keep JJ Watt, the defensive guy in there. (laughs) Hey, can I, uh, can I jump the gun on reckless speculation here? Oh, I mean, reckless. Your speculation. So I'm going to ask. There's no, there's no, no such, means. there's no such thing as so jumping the gun. Just about a half hour ago, Pro Football Talk just dropped this. Broncos interested in trading for a top tier quarterback, not named Carson Wentz. Who Wait. is? Mm-hmm. Whoa, whoa. Wait. Interesting. Reckless now, speculation. Who was the GM that just got hired by the Denver Broncos? I want to. I want to just ask. I, I have an on-air production meeting question This to is going to be big, Declan. Oh, boy. Okay. okay. Watch and learn, Declan. Watch and learn what you're about to see. Okay. We're going to a very dangerous. Judd, how comfortable... I'm do getting you, below the desk. Judd, how comfortable do you feel sharing DMs that you received yesterday about the Denver Broncos? Um, I'm conflicted. I'm not comfortable. And hold on a second. I'm trying to find them. About the Denver Broncos. Yeah. Let me... Uh, and a team that has a quarterback. I... <sighs> Let me hold. Wait, hold on a second. I'm not comfortable at all doing this. By the but, way, um, hold on. Yep. Sorry, Dex. By, by the way, James Palmer of NFL Network is the one reporting this. Pro PFT oh, picked it up. Oh, they yeah? said specifically the Browns n- are not interested in the Eagles quarterback Carson Wentz. Can you read this again? I need to hear the phrasing here. Sure. Headline is Broncos <laughs> interested in trading for a top tier quarterback, not Carson Wentz. There's a little brief summary here, too. The Broncos are open to making a big deal if they can upgrade at quarterback, but they don't necessarily think all the big-name quarterbacks are available are upgrades from my guy, Drew Locke. 
Palmer would you take would you take Drew in, in, would yes. you take Drew Locke if he was available? Yes. I know you would. No, would. hell no. Yes, 100%. I think no. Drew Locke's got some he's no, got some, no, some great No, moves. I'm not no. He's got some fourth quarter comebacks in him? That'd be quiet. Honest to just, God. Sports on. Sleep, sleep on Drew Sports on. You've now. So the obvious question boundaries. here is, do they view, who do they view as top tier quarterbacks? I mean, Deshaun Watson is the one, is the one that's available. I don't think Aaron Rodgers is available anymore, especially if, if they sign JJ Watt, Rodgers probably goes from being like threatening to leave the franchise to giddy. Cause that's exactly what he's yeah, wanting. And he's coming years. and he's coming back. Yeah. It, it doesn't make sense. He's not going to leave right now, but like who would the other ones be? Okay. All right. All signs. I'm just saying. All signs Staff- are pointing to. So Stafford got traded. So it's not Stafford, right? Mm-hmm. Jared Goff got traded. It's not Goff. They're not interested in Carson Wentz. Well, Matt Ryan. We can put in the bit. Let's just put Matt Ryan in the you bit. Like that? You like that? He's an upgrade from Drew Locke. Should we cross that bridge, Phil? It's up to you. I, I think we should. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. I think we need to. Oh my god. Because <laughs> let's just say, let's just say, as as a man my age once said ten years back, the pieces are in place. Oh my God! Reckless speculation. So I shared this with you guys yesterday, but I I've got some inside information from a listener who would- you want reckless speculation. Oh, oh, God. God, you know this ain't gonna happen. How about yeah. reckless trade speculation? For the love of God! Don't who, get don't get anyone fired. Who embraces the lifestyle? I'll just put it that way. Okay. It's a lifestyle. It is. It's a lifestyle. A it's a decision. Mm-hmm. And it's glorious. Let's just say that I wasn't going to bring this D- DM up, despite the fact that I sent it to both of you guys, uh, because we didn't really have that next step. But now that next step is there. So what the hell? We'll dive headlong into the pool. It, yeah, it makes sense. It's now there. Whoa. Oh, my. Uh, sorry. Carson Wentz just got traded. <laughs> Are you serious? Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, just sorry. This is amazing. To this who? Amazing. Okay, Adam Schefter. And then we'll get back to this thing. Yeah, no, okay. no, that's fine. Yeah. Philadelphia has agreed to trade Carson Wentz to the Indianapolis Colts in exchange for a... Oh, my. Oh, my. In exchange for a 2021 third round pick. Oh! And a conditional 2022 second round pick. Dang. That could turn into Dang, a first. Ahead. Oh, so basically, it's, oh, it's a oh third. so I might be right. It could be a first in 2022. I'm assuming if Carson Wentz. So is, my write that is, down's is, is not good. wrong yet. And though. I'm not right either yet. Crap. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. I care about myself. So. So he's going to the Colts, not the Bears. He's going to the Colts. The Colts. Yep. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is a great move for the Colts. They're going all in, baby. Okay, continue on your path. This is amazing. Oh my I, God. I feel like we're at the it's epicenter, all together. The epicenter all of quarterback it's, speculation here. It's like an earthquake. It's like the rock and San Andreas is happening right now. So uh to the back to, to the note I got, basically there was it was implied in the note that there might be a bit of of indecision and or let's go to the word dissension among Vikings officials about trading Kirk and that there might be certain folks that run the football ops that would like to explore trading Kirk. My guess is, and this was not in the note, but putting the pieces of this puzzle together, my guess is that this stems from the fact that the Vikings probably have gone to Kirk and been told by Kirk's camp, he's not going to restructure again. And they are all staring at that huge cap hit in 2022 and being like, my God, we're screwed. We got to do something. We got to do something. Mm -hmm. But there are people that want to win in 2021, i.e. the people that own the team saying, Mm -hmm. hold on a second. You told us Kirk was our savior. And he gives us, in their opinion, largely because they are hardcore football fans, he gives us the best chance to win. What do you mean trade him? And... I snooped around a bit more and I'm like, so who's calling the Niners or what's going on here? Let's just say the team name that came up, Declan Goff, mm-hmm. was the Denver Broncos. Oh my God! Reckless speculation. So I was not going to broach this because, you know, I mean, it's just a note, right? Right. Like the pieces of the puzzle at that point don't really work. Sure. It, it's, it's deep throat at this point. Yeah. Right. But not in that way, Declan. This is I in the, did not in, go in, there. in the Watergate way. Sure. Yeah. Sure. De- Declan's like, what uh, or what? Uh. Um, so George, so so George Payton. So so let's let's continue down this speculatory path, okay? Okay. Because I think it's worth it. Rick Spielman 
trusted George Payton really implicitly as his assistant GM. Like he really, and, and George, I think is good. What if George had a huge say though, in the decision to restructure and re restructure and re-sign Kirk last year. Mm -hmm. And now he is in Denver and Denver is in huge need of a quarterback upgrade. Potentially it does make some sense. And the pro football talk report reads to me like a, like Florio probably knows what he's talking about and, and he probably yeah. knows who it is, but he was not basically, he's basically told if it happens, I will give you the name, but you can float this out there. I love, okay? I love this. It makes sense. The connection makes sense. Denver. I'd love to know more about George Payton's involvement with the initial Kirk Cousins signing. And you we know, don't know a he, thing about it. Was he it. the That's one leading the charge? Total speculation right? on my point. By the way, my in point. terms of framing up like the price of poker here in the quarterback musical chairs game, Mike Garofolo from NFL Network adds the conditional second rounder for Carson Wentz in 2022 is basically an injury protection. It becomes a first rounder if Wentz plays 75% of the snaps or 70% and the team makes the playoffs. So if Carson Wentz plays three quarters of the season next year for the Indianapolis Colts, then it then the, then the Colts will have traded a first and a third round pick for Carson Wentz. I write that down. I'll be right there. A first and a third. Yeah, that is uh, nice. that is it. Think about oh that. Like you know, the desperation so of teams pick. to get franchise quarterbacks. We've all seen Carson Wentz over the past two or three years, especially last year, just broken and shamed and overpaid and injured. And the Indianapolis Colts are going to give up potentially a first round pick and a third round pick for that contract. That's what, but that's the, 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 the real estate market for quarterbacks. I mean, we, we've been saying this now for what, three weeks at least, if, mm -hmm. if not more. The real estate market for quarterbacks set by the Stafford golf trade tells you that if you're ever going to explore the sale of your house, it should be now. Yeah. Like, this is why it's not irresponsible to make the call, because you will get that haul. So teams that we know are still, so the Colts have their guy. We know that the the Rams have their guy. The Lions have brought in Jared Goff. Other quarterback desperate teams in this game of musical chairs include the Bears, the Bears, the Panthers, mm -hmm. the Broncos, and the 49ers. Those four teams we know have been Sniffing around and making big time offers for starting quarterbacks, like like guys who are established right now. We know that the we know that the Panthers offered their eighth overall pick for Matt Stafford, which is amazing. Yes, um, I think we know that like in terms of any sort of Kirk Cousins steam, that the Chicago Bears would not really be involved in that. There's almost no way the Vikings and the Bears nope. would co would commingle in that Agreed. discussion. You're correct. Um, and so I think three teams to keep an eye on. And I think the most likely outcome here is that Kirk Cousins stays with the Vikings. I still think that's the odds on favorite. But the three teams to keep an eye on here, from what we know publicly, are the Panthers, the Broncos, and the 49ers. You heard it here first. Reckless speculation. I first. think it's happening. Reckless speculation. I legit think a trade is going to happen now. I what's, think what's your current percentage now? It I, was like 15%. It was at 15. I think it's up to like 45. Woo. Wow. I'm not going Woo. over 50. But I think it's at like 45%. Wow. It's got to be. And if we're making impromptu write that down predictions, I can throw one out there oh, right here now. here we go. This is out of control right now. What is this happening? Is out of, this is out of I'm control. This the was, shark. Okay, this started off as just a little reckless speculation yep. among friends. And all of a sudden, a shefty bomb hits. Yep. Judd brings private personal DMs from a listener with information to, to the, the show. table. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And now, uh, now Declan's about to make it write that down. We're about to get more write that down. The day after, write that down. By Monday, Kirk Cousins will be traded to the Denver Broncos. Oh my God, I'm doing it. Oh my God, you just went too far. You just went too far. Hold on, I'm calling 911. I'm calling 911. I don't know what to do. I don't know what else to do. It's happening. All right. Okay. The only, the only thing, what we need, we need to send you to write that down or at least. Reckless speculation treatment right now. No, absolutely not. You might need two treatments. I refuse. Drugs and alcohol. I refuse. In the Minnesota sports media scene, fans are represented by two different yet equally important groups. The homers who play with positivity and don't like to have fun, and the realists who prosecute the offenders and recklessly speculate. 
These are their ideas. Put me on the stand. Man, I'm not I'm even sure it. that these are ideas now. I think that these, I mean, there's something going on. There's something happening here. What it is ain't exactly clear. <laughs> there is a new it's happening. There's a quarterback with a trade over there telling me I, I better beware. And Kirk Cousins Ooh. is going to the Denver Broncos. How about this, by the way? You Ooh. want to talk about just desperate to get rid of somebody? According to Austin Gale from Pro Football Focus, the Eagles are taking on a $33.8 million dead cap well, hit. But that's what, that's, yes. <laughs> but that's what makes this so intriguing, Phil. They're willing to take that on. Man. Um, that's but the amazing. quarterback market's too good. I need it's a, too good. There's too much going on. I need a smoke. I don't even, I've never had a cigarette. I'm going to have my first one after this. Mm. Oh my discussion here. It's oh. happening. By the way, uh, do you have some old tweets yes. exposed here too? And it's Denver. Dex. Yes. To be clear, it's Denver. It's Denver. By Monday. It's happening. Okay. Why don't you throw that one on the purple daily? Let's let's put that one on. Or is this or is this binding to the Mackie and Judd? Write that down. Now? I don't care where it goes. I think it's, it should go it's on, an absolute bomb. I think uh I think we should put it in purple daily. <laughs> let's put it in purple daily. <laughs> it is. It's an absolute I know, bomb. I know, I know. I know. It's funny how you said it. Um <laughs> Okay. Old tweets exposed. Old tweets exposed. Mm, it, it is a uh my, my computer is 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 already just freaking out, I think, because I just made the prediction, but I do have some tweets here. It's this is Timberwolves edition. Out. It is. It is. All right, we're gonna start with uh another Timberwolves edition of Old Tweets Exposed. Phil Mackey is up. This was, I believe, on draft night. I'm a, I'm an eternal Wolves optimist, so you can probably okay. find cool. millions. Oh, my God. November 18th, 2020, Ricky Rubio <laughs> will certainly create more opportunities for Cat. He'll, he's also a better shooter than he was five years ago. Uh, what was it uh, two days ago that didn't Cat have like zero shot attempts and Ricky even admitted like, yeah, I got to get in the Cat fourth the fourth quarter yeah, against the, the Lakers, yeah. they yeah he didn't have yeah, Ricky's and, Ricky's also shooting 37 percent from the so, floor and 27 percent from three. This is one of the worst seasons of his entire career. He just can't play here. I don't, I don't get it. He made some shots last night. It's until be tough to until it one. counted. I get it. Shameful. A lot yeah. of Ricky stands back in the day. Oh, it, it makes sense. Great. I love that term, Stan. All right. This is from Judd Zolgad. Makes me look happy. Two games after the season started. Two games very is way too early to come yeah. to any conclusion, but I the did. Wolves have talent. And seem to care about basketball. That's <laughs> you know a what good start. you know they they do care about basketball. Well, that's they're, good. they're not very smart, but they care about basketball. But you know what? This came after a victory at Utah. And gentlemen, I don't think the Jazz has basically lost since that game. Okay. Oh, I didn't put that out. Okay, yeah. Okay. So okay. come, come okay. on now. Okay. Come on. I was okay. very excited. And you did preface it and and hedge by saying two games is way too early to come to any conclusions. And so you. Whatever happens after that part of the tweet, you're sort of exonerated from. Memories. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad. I don't think it tops mine. Um, no, it I, I think I'm going to win again. Because this is from, uh, I believe, draft night in 2014. Oh, wow. Wiggins can actually play D. That's probably what I'm more excited about Are August 7th, 2014. 9.53 <laughs> a.m. So I was either hitting it early. What's, pro what's probably? It was a probably. short for, for her probably. Shorthand for probably. Oh, it is. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. I, I'm know, sorry. I, uh, number one, I can't spell currently. I couldn't spell yeah, back no, then I'm not. Either. No, I'm just asking. Um, I'm not trying to. <laughs> no, no, that's fine. I'm not trying to gloat here. Uh, but yeah, I thought Wiggins, that was the best thing about him coming here is he can actually play some defense. Um, yeah, and you know what? Bad. He's actually playing decent defense with... Golden State right now, and and when he's engaged like against the Cavs who traded him, like he would play some defense, right? But that mostly turned out to be in an extremely incorrect. Way. All right, so who had the worst of it, Judd? You get to decide. Oh, it's very it's it's basically a tie because you're you're both bad. I am going to go with Dex though. Oh, second week in a row. It's Wiggins. Nothing that you can say about him is right. Mm. Yeah, well, he's still chugging along. You know, seventeen, eighteen. You know what the night. problem last night was. Actually, last night, Ricky had a pretty good game. Mm -hmm. But then the problem was, and I'm not joking, he got confident. And he took a key shot late. And it literally had yeah. no arc on it. it, it just a clank it, from the left corner. It was a fastball. It's really bad. It was like he threw a fastball. And it's like, dude, if you're hot, you could clearly make shots in the first quarter, the second, and third. But in the fourth, always defer. Yeah. I agree, but teams are just, a lot of times teams are just begging him to shoot it, and he feels like, oh, okay, well, I'm standing over here wide open, and I've made that shot before, but. So, Declan, congratulations on your old Thank you. exposed victory. Thank you. And that's a wrap on this Thursday wow. Reckless Speculation episode of Mackie and Judd. Please, if you could subscribe to our two YouTube channels, Score North MN and Purple Daily Podcast, and give us five-star reviews and uh, positive ratings or vice versa on Apple 
podcast. That would be super helpful. We'll see you guys tomorrow.